Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again building something from the One Piece series. I have watched quite a bit of it already. Uh, I've watched the live action several times all the way through, and I'm about halfway through the anime so far. It's something that I put on in the background as I build stuff at this moment in time, and I thought it'd be fun to make something once again from the series. There's a lot of cool stuff within there that I could be making, helmets, masks, weapons, all those things, but I wanted to make something that was very quintessential One Piece, and the devil fruit kind of came to mind. Um, Luffy eats the gum gum fruit and turns into the rubber man, so I thought, why not um, build one of those? It's just a fruit that has little swirls on it. Instead of making it out of foam, which I definitely could do, I think I'm just gonna make it out of like polymer clay. I'm gonna give that a go. So today I am sculpting a devil fruit out of polymer clay from One Piece. Let's get to building. After a quick Google search, it was pretty easy to come up with the game plan. I watch quite a few clay sculptors here on YouTube, North of the Border, Zan Von Zed, Sculpt Geek, and Ace of Clay to name a few. I've sculpted a few things out of clay over the past couple years and always seem to forget how quick a build can come together. I bulk out my fruit by forming the shape out of foil. Then all I have to do is put a layer of clay on the outside of it, bake it, and move on to the next step. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth or even round. I just need a round-ish object I can push swirls on the top of. Once I've covered my foil in Sculpey Clay, I bake it in the oven at 275 for 15 minutes. Now you can bake Sculpey multiple times, but there is a bit of a catch. If I just push my swirls on the top of the sphere and bake it, the top layer will easily come off. To properly bond the layers, I spread on some oven bake adhesive before I add my coiled snakes on top. You can put this on baked or unbaked clay to get a better grip between your parts. I've also seen people use this stuff to make light textures, veins, and other small details as well. For the stem, it basically is just a T-shape with a curly end. I don't know if it's necessary to make an armature for this small bit, but I wanted it to be super sturdy. I use some thick wire for the main structure, then wrap it with smaller wire to join the two parts. Once I was happy with the shape, I coated it in some more of that baked clay adhesive and covered the outside with polymer clay. I'm not worried about getting the shape to its finished surface yet. Once it's baked, I can carve it, sand it, and add to it if I need to. For now, I'm just getting it to the basic structure.
My swirls were not exactly perfect, which I think makes it seem a bit more organic and realistic to what an actual fruit would be like. I picked a swirl that didn't overlap itself and made it the point where my stem will overlay. I drilled a hole into the clay with my rotary tool and then proceeded to flatten the bottom of the stem and the swirl to get a nice surface to glue them together. There are several approaches one could take to join these bits together. A lot of clay makers I follow may suggest more like the bake on adhesive and some more clay to bridge the gap. Others may use some five minute epoxy. I'm gonna use super glue to join them together. Then taking the dust I got from sanding the stem, I mix it with the super glue and patch my seam. Once the gap is patched, I take my hobby knife and carve off the excess, then use a sanding stick and some files to refine the shape to blend it in. Two coats of gray spray paint primer. Then I hit it with a coat of dark purple, a light mist of mid-tone, and a light splatter with a lightish purple I have. I realized the anime and the live action pretty much have the gum gum fruit as a nice even color. I wanted to make mine a little more variations in colors like an apple would be if you looked up close at it. I wanted to make those swirls stand out a little bit more so I'm going to mix up a dark purple in some acrylic paint and push it into the groove. Once I have it fully covered then I wipe away the high points with a paper towel. Time to finish off the paint job on this fruit by painting the stem a dark brown. If you get impatient, you can speed up the paint dry process by hitting your surface with a hairdryer or a heat gun turned down low. I usually crank it down to 200 or so. You don't want to get too hot with it as it can cause the paint to bubble up and separate. With the base color down, I move on to progressively lighter and lighter shades of brown until I get to the desired amount of variation. With each light layer added, I get more sporadic with my coverage and the force I'm applying on the brush.
The last thing I need to do is make my gum gum fruit glossy. After that pass with a dark purple acrylic, it kind of matted up my glossy spray paint, so I need to fix that. You can use spray on lacquers, five minute epoxy, like the blood effect thing that I use on a lot of different things, but I decided I wanted to go the less smelly and less brush stroke approach. Mod Podge sells the spray bottles of watered down Mod Podge. I spray it on, hit it with my heat gun, and then repeat. I probably put about four or five coats on this stuff to make it look super shiny. And with that, my gum gum devil fruit is complete. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. It is definitely a hefty boy. Um, it weighs two pounds. Definitely not the lightest of materials that I could have been using. And there are definitely ways that you can kind of offset some of that weight. Uh, definitely using the foil inside it to bulk it out helped because it would have been like 10 pounds had I not done that. Um, but yeah. I think this thing needs a proper box. So I'm more than likely going to make a video of a fancy box to hold this in as well, because it's party. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something out of an anime that you've become obsessed with over the past month or so and um, have something that sits on a shelf tempting you to eat it, even though you'd break every tooth in your mouth. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? <laughs> Give them one of these. Tell them, much props. I just want to, just want to see what it's like to have like a superpower. Let's give it a go. <laughs> If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.